The Mini Bioda Biosphere project continues to develop at an accelerated rate and these changes have a profound impact on the biosphere as a whole. One of these major changes is within the seagrass meadow biome. This biome has truly been through a lot over the last year and has seen everything from large algae blooms to a total collapse of the biome. And although the lake biome has had its own challenges with algae and other imbalances within the ecosystem, it pales in comparison to the complexity of this marine biome. One of those challenges is working with the higher diversity of organisms within this biome. This higher organism diversity puts a significant metabolism load on the system as a whole, and this means that there is a higher nutrient cycling that occurs in this system. It also means that oxygen gets used up much more quickly than in the lake biome, and as a result, the balance of algae has been much more difficult to manage, and the depletion of oxygen within the water column was much more apparent. One of the features that was missing for the seagrass meadow biome was the wave and tide action that's found in nature. So it was clear that this ecosystem needed a mechanism to create waves and tides, although it had to fit within the scope of this project, which meant that as a closed system, them, no powered mechanical devices were allowed inside of the system. I wasn't exactly sure on what I needed to build, but to start, I knew that at least I needed a chamber that could hold and release water by moving up and down. So I used PVC pipes as a chamber and connected the whole assembly to the end of the biome with an extended rubber coupler. This allowed for the whole assembly to pivot up and down, releasing or pulling water into the PVC chamber. I then needed to develop a mechanism that would drive this motion back and forth. So I started with what I had on hand and what I know best, which is 3D print design. The main idea was to really learn from the process and understand exactly what I'm up against in order to make this work and so that I can get it better over time. I eventually developed a 3D printed crank and slider mechanism in order to create the back and forth motion that was needed. Now, what I didn't expect was how excited the internet became over this mechanism, but unfortunately for an alternative use case, if you can imagine. So I eagerly switched gears and decided to work on a belt driven stepper motor system that is fully programmable and would be able to follow a tide chart while maintaining the motions of waves. Thankfully, this build was much quicker and I was able to see really awesome results not long after. The waves form a rhythm and it seems to be just the perfect amount of movement within this biome. Although the system is already performing wonderfully well, there's still much left to do here. I've built a housing for the motor to keep it cool and to isolate a little bit of the noise that it makes. I've upgraded the electronics so that I can program more complex drive mechanisms that will eventually follow a tide chart and the local weather patterns. It's gonna be really exciting to see this upgrade, so I can't wait to build it and share it on this channel. As for the seagrass meadow biome, I currently only see two states within the water, and that is green water with no other macrofilamentous algae, or the water is cleared due to filter feeders, but the macro algae begins to grow all over the tank. Right now, after recently adding a few more oysters, the water is clear. If we give it a couple more weeks, I'm sure that the macro algae will return and will be all over the tank. I've added a ton more amphipods this time around, so I'm not entirely sure if it's gonna make a difference, but that's what we're here to find out. But if we do see that the macro algae is beginning to take over again, I'll add some more modded shore crabs, which is one of the organisms here that really seems to love this macro algae and will make a difference. On the complete other side of the biosphere in the lake biome, the bladder snails, as discussed in the last video, seem to be down to the last two snails that I can consistently find. They are completely non-existent in the lakeshore biome, and that's because the squareback marsh crab just completely crushed the population there. So for now, they'll continue to hold out with just a pair of these snails, but the habitat continues to increasingly grow thicker. So at some point, maybe more of these bladder snails will be added, and my hope is that they can become well-established here in the biosphere. The Chinese mystery snails for now seem to be totally extinct. I haven't seen them in weeks and they were on a sharp decline in recent times. The limpets and ram's horn snails on the other hand are doing phenomenally well and it just seems that the ram's horn snail overall just outcompeted the Chinese mystery snail. On the terrestrial side, it looks like one grasshopper remains. It's a little strange that only one survived and that this grasshopper lasted so long, but I think it's just a very lucky grasshopper. It also happens to be a different species than the rest. 
so maybe that's it. But unfortunately, I don't believe that the environment conditions are right at this point to really be able to sustain these grasshoppers. The main factor, in my opinion, is that there's not a lot of air movement and definitely a high level of humidity within the space. So it won't be a good idea to continue adding more grasshoppers to this ecosystem until the atmosphere build is complete and running again. I'm beginning to find many more amphipods in the lakeshore biome. This is amazing because this moment marks the first time that I've ever seen a growing population of amphipods alongside a population of fish within this ecosystem. The problem in the past has been simply that there isn't enough habitat or a variety of food in order to really support the amphipod population. This time around, what I think is different is the amount of shelter and detritus options for the amphipods. My hope is that their populations continue to expand, which would allow for more food options for some higher organisms. I think that overall, habitat is one of the most crucial pieces of this entire puzzle, and it's this habitat that also kind of provides a challenge by limiting the aesthetic beauty of the system as a whole because essentially it will need to be very dense in order to really sustain a complex ecosystem. So in other words, this system is going to have to grow a big dense jungle of sorts and it won't be exactly beautiful to the eyes, but it's going to be perfect to maintaining a very complex, very wide variety of organisms within the food web. As for where this project is moving next, it will be focused on rebuilding the atmosphere and rain system. This system is key to having the system closed altogether, so I'm really looking forward to beginning work because to be honest, there is a lot to do, but the payout for having this type of system is totally going to be amazing. Essentially, it will mean that this system will run with a complete water cycle and it will just work all on its own. I can then begin to add more insects such as tiny insects that fly, which will have an even more significant impact on the ecosystem as a whole. There will be more food options, more nutrient cycling, and in general, the insects will further raise the complexity of this food web. It will mean that fresh air will constantly be cycling through the biomes and could mean that the insects such as grasshoppers may live more easily within the biosphere. The main component here for the system is the chiller, which pumps water to minus 30 degrees Celsius and will be pumping that water to the back of the atmosphere tanks as well as the biome tanks in order to influence the temperatures and seasons within these biomes. It's a very exciting build to come, so make sure to subscribe and get your notifications as I continue to release more content on the subject. If you're new to this channel, check out the short section where I've posted much more content on the process of the build and where many of the organisms are featured. Your support is literally what has been driving this push to take the content and project further. So thank you very much for your support and we'll see you next time.